Hello everyone, this is Annalisa Shin, your Region 20 West Base Director, and I am going to be sharing with you three presentations. Uh, this is our first one regarding the changes for VASE 2021. This particular presentation will be geared towards how to photograph and upload your artwork images for the VASE 2021 event. Keep in mind that everything this year is going to be in the digital format. There is not going to be the traditional student uh, interviews, so everything is going to be done digitally. In order to create an artwork upload file, you are going to take a photo of your artwork and you need to keep in mind that you are trying to show the artwork at its best. It needs to be taken after the artwork is absolutely completed. It needs to be saved in a JPEG format no larger than 10 megabytes, and it needs to be one single image even for 3D and 2D relief images. The um, VASE Blue Ribbon Board uh, it really encourages students and teachers to use a DSLR camera uh, when photographing artwork. If you don't have access to DSLR, the next best thing is going to be a digital point and shoot However, even if you don't have access to either of those, you will still be able to take your photos off of a simple uh, camera phone, smartphone. So please don't worry if those options are not available to you. For those of you who will be taking your photo from a smartphone, particularly if you have an iPhone 7 or higher, this is very important. iPhone 7 and higher has a um, setting called formats and it tends to default on high efficiency but unfortunately most programs do not recognize high efficiency or HEIC as a compatible format. So the first thing you need to do if you are taking a photo off this phone is you need to select most compatible under formats. You also need to make sure that you turn off the live option and when you are uploading it or emailing it to yourself to upload, just make sure you select the actual size of the artwork. Your setup for taking photos does not have to be elaborate. If you are taking a two-dimensional, a photo of a two-dimensional image, you can simply set it on a, a flat level surface such as the floor or a table, preferably close to a natural light source that does not have direct sunlight on the artwork, okay? Um, I always recommend natural light because when we are shooting indoors with uh, either fluorescent or incandescent bulbs, the light bulbs will tend to have either a yellowish or bluish hue to them, which will skew the colors in your piece. Natural lighting is going to give you the best actual representation of the colors in your artwork. It is recommended that you use a neutral background um, and you are going to crop out all visible background or as much as possible from two-dimensional images at the end. Three-dimensional pieces I will talk about in a moment. Now they have these as examples for uh, setups. They do not necessarily have to be this elaborate. If you have a very large piece of just simple white paper, that will absolutely work. But what they are looking for in terms of the sweep is that the background and the surface are the same thing. So remember that you are trying to represent your artwork at its best. So when you are taking the photo for your artwork, get as close as you can while still capturing the whole artwork. And then you are going to crop out any visible border, background, matting, etc. Do not zoom into the piece if you are shooting on a phone camera. This is going to take away pixels, reducing quality. Instead, be sure that you are getting as close as possible to capture the whole image without um, having too much excess border. Make sure that your photo is clearly in focus. And one thing that I notice a lot with images taken off of camera phones, many times they have a hazy look to them. That means that your lens is dirty. So before you take your photo, clean off the actual lens itself so that you're getting the clearest image possible. 
depending on if your artwork is horizontal or vertical, make sure you are turning your camera to match that uh, position, okay? So if it's a vertical piece, shoot it vertically. If it's a horizontal piece, shoot it horizontally, and then again, crop out all visible background. Avoid keystoning. What keystoning means is the way that this piece is skewed. Now, this happens when you are not directly above the art piece, and instead you are taking the photo at an angle. So the best way to do this, there are some editing apps that you can use in order to um, edit away keystoning, but it's far better if you can just take a good quality image to begin with and make sure that you are squared up to the artwork when shooting. Now this is extremely important. Your artwork image name needs to be your entry ID number. The entry ID number can be found on both the teacher and student dashboard, and it's right here where it says ID. So students, please note that if you are submitting two different pieces, they will have two different ID numbers, and you need to make sure that you are using the correct uh, ID number for the correct piece. With three-dimensional artwork, uh, you're encouraged to create a collage so that the jurors can see all viewpoints of your three-dimensional art piece. So uh, with this, you can create a collage of two to five views. So this would be a two-view example. This would be a five-view example. Do not include any more than five images within your collage. This can be done using photo editing software or in a collage app such as PicStitch. Uh, I have also used Adobe Photoshop Express as an app to edit uh, it, my work into collages on my phone. You may also create a collage for 2D relief artwork. For this, you are going to shoot two to three views in order to show the depth of the pieces. For 3D artwork and 2D image or 2D artwork that is not perfectly squared, you must use a single color neutral backdrop behind the artwork. White is best for dark artworks and black is best behind light artworks. Various grays can also work, but remember that the whole goal is to shoot the artwork at its best. For any students uh, submitting animation, interactive, and functioning artwork, you are going to be submitting both a still image, JPEG, and a video of the artwork that captures its motion. No QR codes will be used. There is a place on the online student intent and artwork agreement form for a URL link, such as to a YouTube video. There are more instructions on this in this presentation if you are uh, uploading animation, interactive, and functioning artworks. A key reminder that I, I want to stress to everyone is that we have to finish our artwork early this year. Even though our technical event date is Saturday, February 13th, the whole base process begins with qualifications on Tuesday, February 9th. So all artwork entries must be uploaded by midnight on Monday, February 8th. If you don't have it uploaded in the system by then, you will be disqualified and we will not be able to juror your, your work. Please don't let that happen. Um, I cannot stress enough, we definitely want to have you participate in this great event, but our deadlines this year are incredibly strong. So don't wait until the last minute. Do the best you can to finish your artwork early, at least by a few days, so that you will have ample time to photograph it, create your reference PDFs, and complete all other forms that you need to. If you have any questions, students, I encourage you to first ask your teacher. Teachers, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I am always available by email or text. Um, 
let me know what issues you might be facing and we will work through it together. I look forward to seeing everyone's amazing artwork this year and I hope that this presentation helped you.